Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of five in our new series on engines. Engines are really cool, and there's a lot of moving parts, pun intended. Subscribe so you get all of our episodes of Test 2 Plus. You can do that right here. You can also come find us over on iTunes and subscribe there. We have an audio podcast, and the audio podcast is all five of these episodes this week smushed into one so you can do that if you don't want to sit through all of these or you want to get them all at once and this is your first episode. This week we're going to talk about how engines work, who invented them and when, alternative engines, things like hybrid engines in cars and electric cars in general, the future of car engines, all sorts of really great stuff. So let's get started. I think you're going to get sick of me saying engine. The invention of the internal combustion engine sparked this whirlwind of innovation from the 19th century forward. But what exactly is an internal combustion engine, or ICE, and how does it work? We're gonna mostly focus on cars, because if we didn't focus on one thing, I mean, there are engines in so many things in the world, but we're gonna focus mainly on cars. And it's not just cars that use this. I mean, generators, lawnmowers, weed whackers, chainsaws, again, we gotta focus. <laughs> the basic principle of an ICE, it's pretty consistent. It's a hollow chamber or a hollow cylinder, and within that hollow cylinder is a piston, and that piston moves up and down. The bottom of that piston is attached to what's called a crankshaft, and the crankshaft sends the power from the explosion inside of the cylinder into the transmission, and then, of course, down to the drive wheels so you can move your car. When fuel or an air-fuel mixture combusts inside of that sealed chamber above the piston, that's really what's moving this whole reaction. You know, the piston is forced downward and that moves the crankshaft. It's that force that we're harvesting from that explosion. That's the whole point of an engine. We're trying to get as much of that energy out of that explosion as possible into our system. And that's, that's it, right? That's what an engine is. <laughs> but okay, not really. I mean, there's a lot more to it than that. We're going to break it down a little bit further. There are also classifications of internal combustion engines. For example, there's reciprocating engines or rotary engines. Rotary engines don't use pistons. They have a rotating system inside. Some cars and some planes use this. The engine actually rotates around as the explosions are happening around the edge instead of going up and down like in a piston system. There's the spark ignition or compression ignition, which are different depending on what engine you're using, like a diesel engine uses a different system. There's the two-stroke or the four-stroke engine. Both engines have their advantages and disadvantages, but we will come back to the stroke system. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to focus on reciprocating spark ignition four-stroke engines. A four-stroke engine means that there are four processes that will turn the gasoline into the energy for our system, which becomes motion. The first process, or stroke, is called the intake stroke. The piston would move downward inside of the system, opening up a space inside of that cylinder. Inside of that space comes an air-fuel mixture pulled through an intake valve. And then the second stroke is the compression stroke. Both the intake and exhaust valves are sealed, and the piston moves upward, compressing that air-fuel mixture into a smaller space. The compression makes the explosion on the next stroke, the third stroke, more powerful for a few reasons. One, the atoms of the molecules of air and fuel are compressed, and that will create heat energy because you squish it, it gets a little hotter. And the molecules of the fuel are close to their flash point because of that heat, so they can ignite more easily and we can have a cleaner burn. So in the third stroke, we get the power stroke, also known as the expansion stroke. The power of the engine is created here when both the intake and exhaust valves are closed and the piston is almost at its highest point or top dead center. The spark plug ignites the whole thing and then that pushes the piston downward. The fourth stroke is the exhaust stroke. That's when we have to get that out of the cylinder so that we can bring in new air fuel mixture. So the piston moves back up again. The exhaust valve is opened and it can get out of there so we can start this process all over again. Once the piston reaches the top of the cylinder, then you come back down with a new air fuel mixture. This is just one cylinder. As you can see, just describing it took a little while. It's kind of complicated stuff. And yet at the same time, it's been around for hundreds of years. We all know that most cars have more than one cylinder. And they have different numbers of cylinders arranged in different ways. And that gives different profiles to what kind of energy and how that energy comes out of the system. 
Cylinders are always, pretty much almost always, aligned vertically. But there are different arrangements. So if you say you have an inline car, right? That's pretty much how it sounds. You say you have an, an inline six or a straight six. All six of the cylinders are in a row, just one row. And it's lined up vertically, one after another. That usually happens in cars with four or five or six cylinders. There's also a V. Say you have a V6, right? That's set in two banks of three, and they angle up like a V. V8, V6, V12, even numbers because they're opposing. There's also flat, which is known as horizontally opposed or boxers. The cylinders are laying flat, they move side to side, and that's kind of like the V just opened up. You know, it's, it's down further. Then there's the transverse, which isn't really a way of alignment as much as how the engine is aligned inside of the car. A transverse engine is perpendicular to the direction of car motion. So if you were to open the hood, the straight six or four would be a row that you were looking at instead of a line along the car. This is common in front wheel drive cars and it, it's, it's super basic obviously to talk about all of these things this way, but when you look at an engine, when you look at the engine itself, that big block in the middle where all of those pistons are, that's what's driving everything under your hood. And growing up in Michigan, I was constantly being dragged to classic car shows to look at all of this stuff. And there was always all of these other little things in there that I didn't understand what they were doing. But the engine, the, the block, the cylinders, those were the things that everybody always talked about. And they were super interesting. You know, you'd open the hood and I do my duty and I whistle. <whistles> Good looking engine. But even with all of the stuff that I learned over the years, there's so much more to learn about engines, and that's what we're gonna do for the rest of this series on Test Tube Plus. We'd like to stop and take a second and thank our sponsor for this series, Toyota. The Toyota RAV4 Hybrid lets your sense of wonder lead the way and drives your passions further, which is something that we live every day here on Test Tube Plus. We try and get way deep into these topics, so thanks to them. If you have any other questions on engines and what they are and how they work that we didn't answer so far, make sure you go down into the comments and you ask them. I recruit your motorheads in the audience. Please help us answer these questions. Get down in there, engage with our community with us. Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus, everyone. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk a bit about the history of this incredibly complicated system. Thanks for tuning in, we'll see you tomorrow.